What's up Airsofters? This is the brand new officially licensed Airsoft version of the Sig Sauer P320 M17 MHS gas blowback pistol. The real version of this pistol was officially adopted by the US Army in 2017, replacing the M9 as the standard issue sidearm. Every branch of the US military soon placed orders for this pistol. The first division to get their freedom fingers on this beauty was the 101st Airborne, of course. This P320 is an officially licensed SIG gas blowback pistol, but it's more than just an official license, it's an official product. Uh, SIG developed and produced this on their own. In fact, they're one of the first real firearm manufacturers to take airsoft brands seriously and wanted to produce their very own product instead of relying on somebody else to simply license something that they created. They worked closely with VFC to produce a realistic replica of their pistol that fits their performance specifications down to, you know, sizing and dimensions and everything else. Let's take a closer look. The first thing you'll notice as an enthusiast of trademarks is that they've got all of the correct trademarks just like you'd see on the M17 or P320, including all of their laser etched trades. On the opposite side, we have the caliber marking on the chamber, as well as the place of manufacture of the real pistol. A unique serial number is visible through the frame here as well. So all of the cues uh, that you would look for in something that was a real training replica are, are right here. Uh, you'll also notice the Sig Sauer grips, uh, or Sig Sauer trades on the grip, and of course uh, you do have generic airsoft uh, info on the underside. That's something that most uh, airsoft manufacturers require in order to differentiate this from the real thing. But let's get into the external features. Now for the video and to give you an idea of what it could look like, we've removed the orange tip, but it does ship with one by law to all um, United States uh, outlets. So if you purchase one, it'll come with an orange tip. It does come with 12 millimeter negative threading on the inside of the barrel. To mount a mock suppressor, you will need an adapter, but those are available. It has standard three dot sights, and the rear sight is part of an RMR plate cover that is designed to fit an as of yet unreleased sight. So make sure you stay tuned to our social media to find out when this is being released. But the fact that you can put an RMR on these bad boys is awesome. As you can see, they've got front and rear slide serrations, as well as a full length accessory rail. Great for lights and lasers and things. Personally, I like the TLR1 HL, although Olight makes some fantastic lights as well. And of course, Surefire is the name when it comes to flashlights. And there is an enlarged trigger guard for when you're wearing gloves, and that's huge for a pistol. It also has a flat serrated surface for off hand index finger placement. Uh, if you choose to place your index finger there, or index your index finger there. And of course, the iconic SIG grips with their popular texture molding right here. Uh, this is a real love it or hate it thing for, for SIG um, shooters. So if you like SIGs, you're gonna love this. If you don't like SIGs, you're gonna love this pistol anyway. It is truly ambidextrous, and by that I mean uh, the Magazine release is swappable. You have a slide release built in on either side. The ambidextrous safety is present on both sides. So right and left-handed shooters um, can use this equally as well um, without needing to change too much around. There are two different magazines available. We have a green gas version. Of course, I picked up the CO2. Uh, green gas version and the CO2 version. Both of them hold 21 rounds. And as you can see, the major difference is where you can see the CO2 uh, as opposed to no hole for the green gas model. Personally, I think the CO2 kicks a little bit harder, but once we get outside, we'll be able to look at that a little bit more in depth. Let's go ahead and take it down. Takedown on the M17 is real simple. Uh, simply slide the slide to the rear. You're going to rotate this lever downwards until it stops, then release the slide and slide it all the way to the front of the frame separating it into two pieces, making cleaning and maintenance very, very easy. The packaging is elegant and simple. In the box, you find the pistol, protected in a plastic bag. The magazine is hidden under the flap, along with the hop-up adjustment tool. This tool can be placed over the end of the recoil spring guide to aid in tuning the hop-up. All of these parts might have a little bit of oil on them when you first take them out of the packaging, so a light wipe down might be required. 
Field stripping the SIG M17 is just like the real one and should be familiar to SIG owners. SIG has employed a new gas system as evidenced by this very interesting blowback housing. Unlike other blowback units, the full cylinder is concealed behind metal. This prevents debris from entering this critical area as well as guards the cylinder area of the loading nozzle from hammer strike, a common problem in other blowback designs. The guide rod and spring are one piece and are easily removed just like most other pistols. The barrel is also extracted in a very similar fashion to other models of GBB pistols. The inner and outer barrels are pinned in place. You'll need to punch this pin out to access the inner barrel. There's also an O-ring around the outer barrel to help cushion the impact of the slide during operation. These gear-like teeth are what interfaces with the guide rod allowing you to adjust the hop-up without removing the slide. The fire control unit can be separated from the frame just by removing the takedown lever. No other pins or screws required. This fire control group is one solid piece. The advantage of having both your front and rear slide rails on one continuous piece is that they will always be perfectly aligned, greatly increasing reliability. The hammer has a lot of mass, which is good for consistent striking of the release valve on the magazine. The hammer interfaces with the upper slide via this roller bearing. Having this roller means less wear, further improving reliability. The ambidextrous slide catch is also one piece, meaning there's no variance with how it responds regardless of which side you use. If you want to move the magazine catch from one side to the other, you'll need a small tool like a hex key, punch, or dental pick. Depress the button and locate the small opening on the other side. Push the tool into this slot and remove this locking piece. The catch can now be removed out the opposite side. Installation is as easy as putting the button in from the other side and sliding in the locking piece until it clicks into place. And just like that, the SIG M17 is set up for left-handed operation. Now that we've taken this bad boy apart and taken a look at how it looks internally, I'm sure you're wondering how this bad boy performs outside. So putting the slide back on, rotating that back into place is very easy. Drop the slide, grab a mag, let's go to town. As you can see, we are outside at our outdoor testing facility and that's because our shooting range inside is still under construction with a lot of upcoming awesomeness. Got the SIG here with a green gas and a CO2 magazine. Now, We've set up target at about 15 feet with a smaller A zone as we've drawn here. You'll notice that it will feel a little bit longer and it's going to give us a good idea of what your grouping is at a somewhat standard engagement distance for an indoor play field. So green gas mag. Nice and consistent through the grouping. Now, the adjustable hop-up that can be adjusted from the front guide rod makes things really easy when you're switching between different weights of BBs. I'm firing two O's right now, but if you switch up or if you're outside and need a little bit more hop, uh, that's really easy to adjust with a pair of gloves on or even barehanded. One of the first things I notice is the ergonomics. It's a really comfortable pistol to fire. It's really easy to get uh, a nice grip on it and maintain control. And it also comes up and brings up your sights really quickly too. So you're not doing a whole lot of hunting to, to find your sights, which makes target acquisition really, really easy. Other things I like, the mag release is easy to get to. Uh, even for like normal size hands, it's real easy to drop the magazine. And because you can swap that left to right, it uh, is perfectly compatible for left-handed shooters as well. Now something that SIG does that not a lot of other pistol manufacturers do is put the slide release really close to the rear safety. If you're familiar with that design, you'll find it right at home here. But for somebody that's used to the slide release being a little bit further forward, when you're getting a pistol grip, make sure that you're not depressing the slide lock at the same time that you've got your thumb up on the safety. Other than that, the ambidextrous slide locks and ambidextrous safeties make operating the pistol really, really easy. We've got our chrono set up here with the SIG. Now, in standard practice, we're gonna be chronoing this with 0.20 gram BBs and we're using a green gas magazine and a CO2 magazine to show you the difference in FPS. Also interestingly, the green gas magazine holds about 23 rounds at fully loaded and the CO2 magazine only holds about 20. So if you want more rounds, you might wanna go green gas. Although the CO2 kicks a little bit harder. Let's find out how much harder, green gas first.
pretty consistent, very consistent. In fact, right about 295, 296 across a couple of shots. Now, consistency is key, especially when you're dealing with gas that is expanding as it becomes more empty, as the magazine becomes more empty. So seeing a nice consistent gas pressure means that they valved it really well. Let's find out what the CO2 magazine shoots. Now, interestingly, the CO2 magazine is a little bit less consistent. You have a fluctuation of about 5 FPS, but this is well over uh, 350, up around 365, 370 on the CO2 magazine. So certainly a good upgrade if you're playing a lot of outdoor and you need that extra range. Or if you're using this as a training tool, the CO2 mag is a lot snappier than the green gas magazine. It's going to replicate uh, the recoil a little bit better than the green gas magazine. Both are excellent options for this platform, and it gives you two different FPS options depending on where you're playing with this most. One other thing I did want to note is the trigger on the M17. Now, in Airsoft, triggers will never really feel like their real firearm counterparts. Uh, something I did want to mention about the M17 trigger is that the reset is quite soft and almost unnoticeable. So if you are looking for a hard reset, you really need to be paying attention. One thing I will mention though, is that there's very little over travel. There's your reset and you've got about a millimeter of over travel. So if you're trying to find the wall coming back, there's your wall one millimeter in and your break. It has a wonderful break. I just wish the reset was a little bit more pronounced. In terms of enjoyment with shooting it and how well it's fieldable, I think if you can find a holster for it, I know that there are some on their way to EVIC right now. If you're watching this video at a later date, make sure you check out a holster for these bad boys. Uh, but in terms of uh, getting a good grip on it, making sure you have accurate grouping, overall, a really good gun right out of the box. We haven't cleaned it, so all of our tests uh, that have been performed thus far haven't uh, haven't been cleaned. We did a hop adjustment just to make sure that the two O's were flying straight. But other than that, it's really easy to use. Um, I would go with the CO2 magazines. I will say that if you are planning on using this for training, that I would definitely go for the CO2 because of having to plan for CO2 magazines. They've gone with a little bit stiffer spring that you may find is a little bit more sluggish with green gas, but that's just kind of the nature of gas blowback pistols when they're designed to handle two different gas pressures from two different gases. Other than that, I find the ergonomics really nice and I find that if you're used to using a SIG or if you like the SIG design, this is an awesome option for you for Airsoft. Let's head back up to the studio. So after taking a look at this awesome pistol, shooting it outside, looking at the internals, I gotta say, for SIG's first kind of foray into their own airsoft gun, it's well made, solid feeling, it handles two different gas systems, it's made by VFC, so the external quality is excellent. It fits in standard holsters and is gonna give you an excellent training medium if you use one of these in the armed forces or if you already have a real firearm version of a SIG P320. But more than that, if you're an airsofter that likes doing impression kits or if you want the coolest stuff that all of the modern military is using, then picking up a SIG P320 M17 MHS gas blowback pistol is your surefire way to make sure that you're rocking all the newest kit that all of the US Armed Forces are using. What makes it better is that it's a great performing pistol. Part of what makes the M17 MHS such a unique design compared to other pistols on the market for the real thing is that the modular handgun system, the whole fire control system inside can be dropped in a carbine kit. You have different colors available that allow you to customize and uh, change the environments in which you'd be using it or the engagement distances. And I think the different frame sizes and colors would be an awesome addition to the airsoft field or airsoft hobby. So something that I'd be looking for SIG to do in the future is maybe release an entire ecosystem around the M17. Make sure you stay tuned to all of our social media to find out when the rear RMR is being released and any future updates to this awesome looking platform. We can't wait to find out even more about SIG's next Airsoft releases, so make sure you stay tuned for that. If you like what we're doing here at evic.com, make sure you comment in the section below and start a conversation about the M17 gas blowback pistol. Hit that subscribe button, click the bell icon to be notified of when we release the latest videos and updates on all of our Airsoft products. 
And make sure you follow us on our other social media accounts like Facebook and Instagram, where we're always releasing awesome photos and video of exciting Airsoft products. See you guys on the field.